All right, thanks for staying with us now in Nigeria. A House of Assembly is the state level legislature. Um, all Houses of Assembly are unicameral with elected members who are designated as members of the House of Assembly, Assemblymen or MHA, and who serve four year terms. Principally, um, the State House of Assembly is to make laws for the peace, order, and good governance of the state in respect of matters not in the exclusive legislative list, but in concurrent list. It could also legislate on other matters with which it is um, empowered by the Constitution to do so. So how much do you know about the House of Assembly and how it directly impacts you as a citizen, right? That's the conversation. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join us, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 1 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. So I must confess that, first of all, I am a very, very, how do I put it? I was not very um, interested in political issues until I was forced to, I mean, you know, until I, I was fortunate to be part of a breakfast show where we had to review the papers every day and all of a sudden you are now really focused on issues around what is happening governance mm -hmm. and politics and i think it has really transformed my life you know because again now i see a lot of things and i know where the problem is you have a very critical um and unique opportunity because again when voters go to the polls all they are thinking of is governor and president yeah. Yeah. and they forget that the people that make these people's job whether good or bad are the people that are the lawmakers mm. and in your instance is on the state level where you're running to um, the house of assembly so in case people do not know let me reintroduce our guests all right, so Honorable Olumide Oguru is the Labour Party candidate for the Lagos State House of Assembly, Surulere Constituency 1, as a public figure and a, an actor. He believes in accessible leadership and youth inclusion and strives for betterment of the Surulere Constituency. He attended King's College and the University of Lagos and graduated from Babcock University. So... Let us officially welcome him again <laughs> to the show. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> Thank us. You. So, I mean, as I said, it's a critical role that you're going into. And I think one of the major routes that people had had was that, where did this one just come from? Right. You know, because all of a sudden it was like, okay, Labour Party won in Lagos. And, you know, there's a wave of Peter B. Everybody's, you know, all the youth are, you know, you know trying to support him. And all of that, and it's like you are trying to just, you know, ride on that wave, right? Maybe you should help us understand first of all why, why you decided to run, and you know, what exactly is if you say you have certain issues in Surulere mm -hmm. that made you to come out? Right. What would that problem be? That's why you're coming out. Right. So the main reason why I decided to run is. I recognize that we are in a very um, significant period in, in Nigerian history. Um, this is the first time that the youth have had a mass awakening in terms of wanting to be politically aware and participate in, in the government process. Now, it's always something that I thought I would be doing, but I just thought it would be more later, later on. Yeah, so my friends and I would joke around and say, okay, maybe when we're 35, we'll join a party. Then around 40, we'll see maybe 42, we, you know, we'll contest and all of that. But the happenings in, in recent time have really just suggested that um, tomorrow isn't promised. Um, I've, I've lost uh, people really close to me. You know, my best friend passed uh, two years ago. And the, the, the period before he passed, the week before he passed, this was towards the end of 2021 in, um, in November, we had just talked about our plans for 2022. And we had done a whole breakdown, okay, January, I'm going to do this up until uh, December. He's a music producer, so he had given me his rollout plan for the year. And he passes the very next week. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, if we want to make impact and we're planning for the next, you know, 10, 15 years, what's the guarantee that we are going to be here in the next 10 or 15 years? So we need to start now. That's one. Number two, I also recognize my influence as a young individual in Nigeria today. 
And I understand that by just virtue of running for office, um, it will go a long way to inspire a lot of young Nigerians to also aspire to be in these positions. Um, so it's, it's bigger than just me. This is really me trying to be the voice of young people, trying to encourage other young people that we cannot be passive anymore. The policies that are being put in place now are going to affect us directly. We no longer have the canopy or the covering of mommy and daddy helping out. I remember back in the day, I would just go to my parents, I need X, Y, Z. How they get the money, don't really care. I just need it by 4 p.m. today. Mm. And if they don't give me by 4, problem. Mm. But now I'm understanding as, I, as I'm getting older that there's a lot that goes into getting money, especially in Nigeria. It is not the easiest to make money. Mm. So whatever policies are in place now are affecting us. If the exchange rate goes up and Naira is $1, one dollar to 2,000 Naira, that's affecting my buying power. I want to buy something online. I'm going to be spending way much more. Uh, so that's the reason why I really decided to change and um, to run because I feel, actually, I know that as young people, we have innovative ideas. We have more modern ideas in terms of problem solving. And the reason why Nigeria has been going around in circles is we've been recycling the same leaders with the same ideas and the same ideologies. So why not balance their experience with our problem solving skills more in line with what's going on now. It's 2023, there's advances in you know, technology, the tech space is doing amazing. We are more connected, there's social media. So mm. our angle to politics cannot be the same as their angle. So we can definitely collaborate and make things better. Um, mm. As regards Suruleri, um, I, yeah. I grew up in Suruleri, I've spent all of my life so far in Suruleri. And I know that I have turned out how I have turned out because of the things I've been exposed to in terms of people I've met, people I've worked with, um, schools that I've gone to and, and things like that. So I look around Suruleri and I see that there's so much potential because there's people that are even with the situation in Suruleri trying to make things for themselves. You, you talk to the average person in Suleri and the average person in Suleri is very optimistic, very hopeful. But there's not that much of recent in terms of any aid or any active help for people in Suruleri. You look at uh, the, the schools in Suruleri, you look at the students on their way to school and they don't really look excited to be going to school. They don't even look like they're going to school. Even just their general approach to attending school and their, and their general demeanor and conduct, how their uniforms are worn, uh, that just shows that there's a lot that we need to do even mentally to really just change the mindsets of young people in Suruleri. And because I'm young, a lot of what I'm trying to do is to try and nip the problem in the bud early. Because a lot of the things that we have wrong in Suruleri, I believe are, are, are mental in terms of our outlook to life. Uh, you see some of the people on the road, I don't like to refer to them as thugs or area boys. Mm. I think they are victims of circumstance because that could easily have been me. I didn't pick my family. I didn't pick the circumstances I was born in. And you, you talk to them and a lot of them are not very happy about what they have to do. Sometimes they even do these things reluctantly, but they feel like they need to do it to survive because the system in place right now um, is built on them getting handouts to, to live. So. I'm looking at Suleri from a more holistic point and seeing if we work on building human capital development, if we work on making the amenities in Suleri work, mm -hmm. um, even things down to street lights. If, the, if Suleri is lit, that could go a long way to even reducing the crime rates. Um, you have better um, academic setups in school, um, better trainings, creating mentorship programs where young people can see people that have come from Suruleri and have gone on to make amazing things. So we know it is possible regardless of the situation around you. Um, these are some of the reasons why um, I'm running for office because there's so many times people, you go to National Stadium, there's people on their own time, on their own money, working out every day, training, um, but they, they never really get scouted or that never really goes anywhere. So imagine all the jobs we could create, all the opportunities we could create with having a better structure to help people nurture their natural talents and also create a situation where uh, things that are positive are made appealing. So even people that had no idea that they wanted to go into coding, for example, you present it in a way that's interesting and eye-catching and young people want to hop on that. Uh, as opposed to just say, okay, we're building schools and we're buying laptops mm. and all these other things that, that we're seeing. But even with all these things that have happened, if you really look at it, you don't really see the impact. 
So we need to just have a change in government. Also, just access um, to leadership. You don't really have forums where, you know, state leader or local government chairman is actively trying to engage with the people. Government isn't attractive, especially to young people. Um, a lot of us just think it's very boring and hmm. whatever they want to do is what they will do. Absolutely. And it's, it's not for me. And that's what we really, really need to change, especially if we're talking about where Nigeria is going in the future. We have hmm. to start now. Too little. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, okay, I mean, you said quite a whole lot, and, um, and they all sound really pretty. I mean, but um, I also think that you're speaking about this. What I hear you say is a lot of, um, is, 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 is more geared towards empowerment. Mm -hmm. However, the, the position that you're going mm -hmm. for is more about policy. Of course, of course. You understand? Of course. So it's not the 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 empowerment is I mean everyday people come, even mm -hmm. private sector, mm -hmm. people are always doing things. Mm -hmm. That's that's the truth. Mm -hmm. But is this sustainable? The I would feel that where we should get to mm -hmm. is where there there are laws, you know, there are policies that make these things binding. It's not so much as... Oh, so whether you are there ex tomorrow exactly or not. Or not. Mm -hmm. it, it, it becomes the standard. It becomes law. Mm -hmm. It becomes the law. So it's not about handout. You're not waiting for some private public partnership or... It, it, it is a standard. Mm -hmm. So you know that, okay, if you come into this constituency, this is how it goes. Of course. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, again, there is government in continuum. Mm -hmm. So another person who comes, because it is, it is, it is not sentimental, it is not... It is not, um, what's, there's a word, it's not sensational. Mm -hmm. yeah. It becomes easy, you know, to be sustainable. And everybody would now agree to say, oh, no, 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 you can't do anything outside of this. This is the standard. Mm -hmm. Anything else you do. So I'm, I'm hoping that mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. you know, being here, you, you're able to say that, okay, when you get into that position mm -hmm. as a policy maker, I mm -hmm. mean, this is what drives you concerning education, right. concerning mm -hmm. health, concerning MSMEs, you know, concern, concerning Everything. general living. Okay. Well, if I had actually exactly. point, um, uh, noted that mm -hmm. I was going to ask that, you know, if you had prepared, you know, policies that you, mm -hmm. pref I mean, um, what's it called? You have policies that you, you intend to propose mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. house, mm -hmm. you know, that would help with all the things mm -hmm. that Diola has listed in Surulere constituency. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't mind to share those with us. Okay, of course. Uh, so, um, I, I fully do understand at the end of the day it is a legislative position. Mm -hmm. um, but just because, again, uh, I'm not sure how long some of these policies will take in terms of implementation. Mm -hmm. Because again, it also depends on you know the numbers in the house, majority, mm -hmm. minority, mm -hmm. and all of that. So in the more immediate, there are things that you know we can do as constituency projects to at least kickstart mm -hmm. um, the change that we want. And because I am uh, fully youth-centered uh, um, as well, um, I feel like there's some things that we need to start doing immediately, mm -hmm. especially if we're trying to catch them young. Um, but also in terms of, of policies, uh, I'm very particular about education. Mm. Uh, I am I'm, I'm a direct recipient of a good education. Uh, and I even spend time just going around, um, you know, on, on this campaign train, just really trying to understand what the people actually want and need, as opposed to um, preferring solutions that I think are the mm. way forward. Uh, for example, when we're talking about small businesses, um, I went to a couple of marketplaces and I had certain conversations with some of the market women and they really did speak on, as you, when you mentioned the, the double taxation, um, that they are paying a lot of you know, taxes yeah. and, and levies and they don't really see where these monies are going. And even to the point where um, some tribes uh, feel like they are even being Exactly. You know, extorted, extorted basically, um, just because, um, you know, their counterparts from other parts of the country don't really have to pay, mm -hmm. you know, certain amounts and, and things like that. So um, there definitely will be a focus on, you know, education, mm -hmm. um, on, on, on small businesses. We also need to make the amenities work. I remember there was a time where the street lights were up and running. You know, I would be driving home and I would be happy. I'm getting to And now um, you, you get to learn it's dark. 
I don't know if I can say that right now. <laughs> okay, let me let's take a very short break. I like to open our phone lines. Right, I like to open our phone lines, and I will come to you and then you <laughs> stay with us. <laughs> All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we are discussing the race to the House of Assembly, and we have with us Olumide Owaru. Um, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa, one with the hashtag Wayshow. Now, our phone line is now open. It's already ringing. <laughs> Number to call is zero. Please don't insult our guest, you. I beg you. <laughs> zero seven zero two five zero zero seven seven four nine. That's the number to call. Be very civil with your contribution, and let's um, have a great conversation. Please turn off the volume of your whatever um, you're watching us the device so we don't have a feedback. NJ, quickly. Um, well, I have several questions. Ah, please make yeah, it short. Well, I'm going to just make it short, and maybe while you're answering, you just um, you know summarize. Right. Um, one thing I want to know why you moved. Why, why you got into politics? Mm -hmm. You were an actor, mm -hmm. you are an actor. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, um, what encouraged you to mm -hmm. go into politics? Aside, because um, on a daily, we all have different things that we do and mm -hmm. we see the country, we leave the, um, mm -hmm. the situations, mm -hmm. but not all of us even, are even members of the Okay, party. so hold that question. <laughs> <laughs> Our first caller from <laughs> Bombay, Obina, you're live. Hello? Okay. Good evening. I'm with you. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Yes, go ahead. You're live. My greeting to all of you in the studio. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Especially to the obedient in the house. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm lucky to be the first winner, the first person to call you this evening. My question is to the guests, please. Mm -hmm. The slogan of Lagbo Party is take back your country and a new Nigeria. And I've carefully listened to you about what and some certain things you want to do for your constituents. But I want to ask you, please, because if you do not know where things go wrong, you will not know where to correct it. Mm -hmm. Have you sit down and get some loopholes, areas, we are Lagos State is getting it wrong, especially in the education system of Lagos State. Now, coming down to your constituency, my question is: Do Lagos State government have any social intervention on students of Lagos State? And how are you going to fully involve your constituency in that uh, program? Number two. I'm always going to ask you, please, before you go there, do you have any plan or do you have already bills in your mind that can address drainage system or failures in Lagos State as it is today? Mm. These are my questions. Thank you. And I know you I think, yeah. do that. Thank you. I'm Thank right. you so much. So right. do you have bills, you know, do you have you identified the problem mm -hmm. and where do you think Lagos State is getting it wrong? Mm -hmm. Uh, at the end of the day, the, that is the reason why there is the House of Assembly. Uh, and that is why we're all representing different constituencies. The entire point is for people who know these constituencies and have experience with these constituencies to come together, table what the issues are, and figure out the best way to solve these issues. Mm. I also know that different areas will require some different type of techniques in some situations depending on what it is that we're trying to achieve. Yeah. So it is very important that as, as House members, uh, we all work together for those who are opportune and, you know, mandated by the people to represent them at that level. Mm. Um, with that being said, um, something on uh, waste management, um, that is one of the issues that, you know, is faced in Lagos generally which you can um, relate to uh, drains being blocked and, you know, people f sand filling certain areas uh, where should be the natural path for water to flow through. Yeah. So what we need to do is find a way to 
have, and, and this is one of the things that um, GRV uh, has, has um, on, on, his, on his agenda as well, is have wetland protection. So there's certain areas where you know you cannot be constructing to um, interfere with you know, the flow of water. No, um, another thing we need to do is incorporate uh, the private sector into waste disposal. Because there are certain areas. You are looking for no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not for magic. I'm going to try. Lama, you're Good evening, my sister's in the house. Hi, Lama. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, as I'm watching this fine gentleman mm -hmm. in the house, I know he will do well. Okay. Um, but I want to ask you one question. Um, now, you see the type of policy the executives are bringing out. What policies that we put the, the masses are now being victimized. The masses are in pain. Now, what will you do as a legislator? Because here, if I am talking in other sister station, I tell them that what is happening now is the spirit of Antichrist and one spirit. We leaders allow the spirit of Antichrist to enter them. They bring in policy that affect the masses. They themselves just feel it. As a legislator, what will you do when the executive go reckless? How will you call the, the executive reckless when they bring policy? That will affect matters. Look at what is happening in the vaccine sector. I tell people this is exactly what I call anti crisis things that has entered from leaders that make them to bring out policies that Thank affect you. the masses and they are not feeling it. The pains of the masses. What Thank will you, you do? Olumide, so everybody's asking you because <laughs> for you, I mean, um, it, it's it's nice to have freshness, like I mm -hmm. said, on the ballot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but again, I don't want us to see like be seen that because we want to support our own of with course. our young people, yeah. we're supporting mediocrity or we're supporting yeah. people that are not prepared for the job, mm -hmm. right? You have an uh, what do you call them? There's a there's a historical candidate mm. that you know. First of all, he was in your industry. Mm. That is now the what do they call it? Everybody is not particularly happy because mm -hmm. they, I think they feel like he wasn't prepared for mm -hmm. that job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't know the job. It's different mm -hmm. from going on camera and live mm -hmm. camera sure. action. No, mm -hmm. these are real life issues. These are mm -hmm. like you, you're bringing up laws mm -hmm. that would protect us. Mm -hmm. You know, especially your constituency in mm -hmm. Surulere, right? So I mean, uh, we would like to hear. Because, I mean, I, before you, if you say you're running, you're going to the House mm -hmm. of Assembly, you should have said, okay, I have proposed like 15 bills. These are those 15 bills. I can just tell you maybe two or three. Say, mm -hmm. okay, these are the ones that I know that are pressing mm -hmm. in Surulere constituency. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of level of preparedness that we are looking of forward course. to having. Of course. Right? You know, so, I mean, when you hear the callers asking, 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 mm -hmm. it's almost like they're repeating the same question. Mm -hmm. What exactly are your, you know, your policies that you have down to say these are the policies I intend to propose mm -hmm. when or if elected in the house. Mm -hmm. For me, one of the things as well I, is is also the execution of, of policies that are already in place, which mm -hmm. is why for me it is the transparency and the style of government that we need to first address. Mm -hmm. um, if you are more on ground in your constituency and your constituents have access to you, then there's more conversation, there's more dialogue, and you, at that point, are more in touch with what they need. Um, so that also does help in formulating policies gearing up into the house. Also, there have been certain policies that should have brought about some sort of change. But the problem is how these policies are then executed and the fact that nobody is being held accountable in terms of delivery. Mm -hmm. So you say, for example, okay, we're going to pass this bill and this bill, it took us, say, six months to pass, but um, expected period of execution is, is eight months. And after a year and a half, you know, whatever projects that were supposed to be put in place or whatever partnerships were supposed to be built or roads supposed to be constructed and contracts are supposed to be giving out, um, either have been given out and haven't been supervised or monitored, or we just don't hear about these things anymore. anymore. Mm. Uh, so it's not necessarily about formulating 
new a laws. whole new there set of laws. They are yeah. existing. Yeah. There are existing. Well, that's a major problem. In, yeah, in that. yes. yeah, there are existing um, policies yes. mm -hmm. that have not been properly implemented. Yes. The ones yeah. that have not been properly. Yes. There are some that have not been implemented at yes. all. True. Then the ones that have been implemented right or, or yes they've been under implemented so I, I i get you i mean it's a valid point yeah. so i mean it, it would be it, it's nice to hear the sincerity yeah because again sometimes people feel like oh if i come and i bring seven you fold are, agenda yeah, 20 yeah, fold yeah, agenda yeah, yeah. you know to take me seriously yeah. but what you said is actually deep, deep because yeah. truly we do have some very nice policies on paper mm. Where are the um, um, signs that these mm -hmm. policies have been translated into reality? Mm -hmm. Yeah, NJ, you wanted to go. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I was initially just asking about your background, just right. going a bit back mm -hmm. um, and asking why you decided to transition into, you know, politics. Mm -hmm. And what I guess one of my questions was, was your immediate plan for you know, the constituency, mm -hmm. one, two, <laughs> yeah. one, yeah. indigenous. That's a, yeah. I'm not, two, layer one is, um, Still young, Baja, Ojolegba, Yaba. That's a major area. That's a major area. That's not my constituency. Right. Why, mm -hmm. why, why did you, why the transition? Mm. So the transition, again, came from realizing the opportunity that has presented itself. If we're being honest, before and now, regardless of the number of registered parties, Nigeria has been part practicing a two-party system. True. Uh, and none of the parties have really appealed, to, appealed me. to me personally. Because we are in the situation where we are in, where we have tried out both parties mm -hmm. with their manifestos and with their ideologies, and we still spiral to this point. So I personally did not believe in what any of these two parties stand for. Uh, but then, with Peter B switching to the Labour Party, uh, he's somebody who, just from a natural standpoint, um, is very relatable. Yeah. Uh, and there is a sincerity in, in his tone when he speaks. He, he doesn't try to present any grand ideas or sell this is my opinion anyway, sell any major dreams of, oh yeah, elect me and, you know, in two years time, everything is going to be sorted, there'll be flying cars and, and whatnot. Basically, what he said that appealed to me the most is, there's a problem, we cannot fix this problem overnight, but we need to get on the path towards the problem being fixed. And that is what appealed to me the most. And that really is the entire reason why I did join the Labour Party. And upon joining the Labour Party, uh, there was an environment conducive enough to encourage participation to run. To, to run. So I'm like, okay, this is a good opportunity. Um, let's, let's see how this goes. And mm -hmm. the fact that the party even trusted somebody like me with my background um, to even be um, given the ticket to represent the party at, at this level is, is an amazing honor that um, I, I feel uh, very blessed to have and also very optimistic that the youth can do um, something towards national development. Because you look back at Nigerian history and the people that were making decisions that have affected the entire country were uh, close to my age, late 20s, early to mid 30s. Yeah. So that's so what we're afraid of you yeah. now. No! <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're afraid. No! It's, it's, again, again, you know, we're, we're human and, you know, it, it's okay to make mistakes as long as you don't make the same mistakes multiple times and you do own up when you make these mistakes. Mm. There have been a lot of mistakes in the Nigerian political um, scene. scene that people have not owned up to True. or apologized for and attempted to learn and move on. I think that is the problem. So mm. it's just changing the, what it means to be a politician, mm. really. Uh, demystifying all the bravado around the office and all of that. Just, yeah house boy so do you think that you you have done your part in being visible enough to the people in your constituency that um you know they they would they recognize you and will be willing to vote for you to a certain extent uh also because I did announce candidacy a little late because of you know some some back end things that just needed yeah, to be sorted out. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah had it some was. Cases yeah, there was. Yeah, there was some cases with you know candidacy and we were in court for a while. Um, and just because of what I had going on, I honestly wanted to be sure that everybody was on the same page yeah. before mm -hmm. announcing and then having to go back and forth and explain what was going on. So mm -hmm. that process took a lot longer than I was hoping for. Um, but okay, that so being said. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I do believe that I have done enough to put myself out there in terms of what I'm made up of and where my head is at and you know the, the plans that I have, the hopes and dreams that I have. So if the people buy into that idea um, and they think that I am fit to be their representative at the House of Assembly, I'd be more than honored to do my best to make sure so nobody's let down. I will not know the last of this one if I don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> and this was from one of our audience when she heard, I mean, sorry, one of our co anchors mm -hmm. when she heard that you were the guest for tomorrow. She mm -hmm. said, ah, please, 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 go and ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you. Mm -hmm. So she's, I mean, she looked at, she looked through your social media because mm -hmm. we're in the age of impressions, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she looked through your mm -hmm. social media mm -hmm. and she felt like for somebody that is running for this kind of delicate mm -hmm. position where you're going to be cre uh, um, reviewing policies, mm -hmm. the issues around you know, mm -hmm. the people. Your social media handle doesn't tell that, mm -hmm. okay, this is what this person stands for. Yes. So, for instance, you go on Mr. Macaroni's page, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. see that he stands mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. You go on Faust's page, yeah. you see mm -hmm. that. So, mm -hmm. that it would be easier of course. if Mr. Macaroni or Faust of came course. out to say they want um, to like, yeah. yeah. no break. Yeah. Of course. Of yeah. course. Who is Olumide? Of what course. is he passionate about? Of course. Who has he, like, who, what kind of impact of course. Mm -hmm. has he left? You know, what kind mm -hmm. of prints has mm -hmm. he left? In the you in know the local that, community, in local yeah, yeah. yeah, the kind of impact that he's done mm -hmm. that is giving him, you know, um, the the credibility to mm -hmm. say, okay, yes, he can actually handle right. the pressure because right. that seat is hot. Of course, you know, there's a lot of things that will happen in that allows that. Of course, <laughs> it's a lot of matter. Of course, of but course. So, I mean, I mean, if you were speaking to Jennifer now, mm -hmm. what would you say to her, mm -hmm. right? Because again, it's social media. Of course, we have to see you and see you. Of course, of yeah. course, of course. So the thing is. Uh, my my approach to social media has been very passive um, up until this period. I never really paid attention to my social media. I didn't really care for it. I just used it to use it to promote my work. Um, but what I have been more concerned about is personal growth and personal development in terms of engaging with people in real time. So for people that know me personally or in spaces where I've been opportune to meet more experienced people, I'm always asking questions, always trying to learn. Um, most times I sit in a room and I don't say much. I'm just taking things in, I'm absorbing things, really trying to understand um, how systems are made up, how does this work. Even when I'm on set, I'm asking, why is this light here? What lens is that? Why is this working? Um, just so I really understand how that is set up. Another thing is, I believe that we all have different roles to play in terms of, in terms of development. Yes. Now, we already have people like, you know, Files and Macaroni, who are my good friends, who we do discuss, um, you know, things relating to politics on, 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 um, in times when we do see. And they already have the social media front covered. I mean, if Faz and Macaroni are talking about politics on their lives, people are engaging, people are commenting. And we have other people, even on, on Twitter as well, who are already driving conversations on wow. social media. So we have that on lock. So we need to do this simultaneously. Mm. So we have people on social media. We have people who are setting up NGOs, uh, you know, people who are really trying to help people set up small businesses. We have people who are trying to make an impact through different avenues. So we need to all be doing these things at the same time. We all can't be on social media. We all can't be in politics. So as long as the goal is understood, we can work in unison. Um, if I make it into the house, I'm still going to have conversations with Files and Macaroni. If something is going sideways, they can reach me and be like, bro, when you were going in, this is what you said, this is what you so said. They can hold, you they can hold me accountable. And, and that's what we do as young people. I've, we are a lot more honest with each other. Mm. And we check each other mm. a lot. If, if any of your boys are going left, you guy, call, yeah. So, so we do that. So as long as we're all um, in agreement mm -hmm. to what the end goal is. And we have as many people in different areas really trying to implement that goal. I think that really is what we need. Okay. So we just want to plead that be putting small, small things on social yes, media. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Not just bitch and get no. afraid that we cannot see her face. <laughs> no, that way. Really, okay. <laughs> That's the little okay. Um, so this is um, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Race to the Lagos House of Assembly not too much talk. I believe wholeheartedly that Labour Party is determined to do well and will do well. I pray that my dear brother Olumide Owaru will be voted for and also win because I can really see his zeal and determination to deliver. 
I pray this time there is no rigging. I'm so glad and excited to see this handsome gentleman in the studio. I happen to be his fan. Aww. I like the role he plays in the Johnsons, Tari Johnson. Aww. I want to ask him that how can he cope with politics and acting? My name is Daniel Elo. Sexy. Um, <laughs> good evening, my, dear, uh, my beautiful sisters of ways. It's great to see your guest dressed as a Lagosian. His dedication in his Johnson's role gives me the light that he would deliver in the capacity of his political So quickly, ambition. how do you want to manage? Will something suffer for it? Um, the priority right now is the political Politics, office. Okay. That, that is the immediate thing I'm going to immerse myself in. So as, as we go on, if I am elected into office, you know, we'll figure it out. But right now, I think my husband is, is a fan, by the way. Ask something mm -hmm. I want to yes, ask. Yes, okay, so this is um, me having my eyes on you please. as a Suruleri constituent. Yes. You do not get to move out of Suruleri. Yes. Why are you in that Not move to VI. No. I will personally <laughs> check. <laughs> that you are still in Suruleri. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, I love it. Yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah. I need to be because on Because if I'm not doing it like you, mm. yeah, I'll mm. knock your house. I will put it we'll on social media, will we? We'll take you back to Suruleri. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so thank much for having me. Yeah. Thank yeah. Thank yeah. Before we go, thank you, ladies. Ensure <laughs> you follow us across all our social media handles at Wish Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share. Invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our very important quote, here it is again. We cannot be mere consumers of good governance. We must be participants. We must be co-creators. You have to be part of the process, okay? There are great people stepping up to the plate, so join. I will right, see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. It's International Women's Day tomorrow. So bring another great conversation to your screen. Have another interesting guest, so you stay with us. We'll see you tomorrow. Wow. <laughs>